This episode of Dr. Drew After Dark is brought to you by Candid and Bombas. I will tell you more about both of them in a little while, but right now, let's get on with the show. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Keep those emails coming. I have great emails today. It's at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com, and of course, the voice messages which we can never get enough of, 818-253-1693. My guest today, well, his name is applied to Merch Method because that's where you can get this T-shirt as well as the Dr. Dark T-shirt, merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura from a little thing called Your Mom's House. The guy's name is Tom Segura. Hello. Welcome, Tom Segura. Thank you for having me. And new theme song on the show today. And and, and as I was thinking about our uh, voice messages, we are going to go not just to a new year, a new song, but we're going to have a new format too. Yeah, well, you know, everybody for the long, ever since we started doing a show with you, it it came to our attention that, I mean, it's obvious, right? I can't believe we didn't see it earlier that people want to talk to you. Yeah. Like that's the, that's what they want to do. They, you yeah. know, you're the expert that they can ask something to. So And they want to listen to me talking to people they too. They do, they yeah. do. People love it. Um, so we're integrating uh, phone software lines so that people will very soon be able to call in and so, have conversations. With so them. we'll tweet out when we are, when we're here yep. recording the show and taking live calls and look for it very soon. I think it'll be, what do you think blue band within a few weeks? Yeah, I think at some point within either the beginning of, I think at some point in the beginning of March, either first or second week of March. We'll have that right. So it's a new year. It's a new theme song. It's a new format. And, and you're going to have a new pretty steady, girlfriend here exactly tell me about this um most episodes you'll be doing with christina p fantastic um and then i'll be sitting in yep. on episodes as well and then we have some other special guests that will sit perfect in with you. it's perfect so it's funny when she was on this and uh, nadav i think you'll remember this she was on the show she goes you know you should we should sort of have a some sort of talk type show and I, she was like i'd love to i could so who would be the, i go you you could do it like, yeah me <laughs> me she was like shocked right i was yeah. like of course you she's yeah, honored confirmed. she'd she be wants, perfect she and you'd to. be perfect so yeah. it's, it works perfect so it was like an easy fit and let's move on let's do this yeah so everybody look forward to this in 2020 yep uh coming very soon like within weeks and i would just like to add that unlike um robert paul champagne i think you're a handsome guy but i'm not sexy you're not you hot. See, I'm not hot and I'm not sexy. But and, and I, I gotta tell you, Robert, agree. Yeah. But and, and it's okay, Robert. Handsome. We love you no matter what. We do. We really yes. do. Of and, course. Uh, we love him. And uh we would love to expand our relationship. Tom and I want to take you to dinner. That is a plan in New York City. So and if, if that offers uh, on the table. If Drew's not sexy enough, it could just be you and me, you know? It's true. It's true. And uh, I took your advice and I've been on a diet. So, oh, have you lost any weight? Yeah, I've lost a few. You had just lost a bunch of weight, too. I know, but I started to gain it back. That's the way it goes. I know. It's just, it's, it is, I realize that it's never not going to be in my life. Well, that's why, that's why you got to find the diet that is a chronic Mm -hmm. lifestyle for you. Right. Right. Do you have something that I can, I, I, I find that, I mean, it's not, it's not that unique that just, you know, if I start allowing excessive, simple carbs into my life, Try cutting them going. out all together, see what happens. Well, I, yeah, it's I've been done, amazing for me. Yeah, do you, do you cut them out all together? Completely, and it's been. Do you uh, just eat protein and fat? Yeah, 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 and and I'll overeat the protein a little bit. That mm-hmm. that's my nemesis now. Yeah, but but I I've, I've not felt better on a diet ever. Well, I've been and doing, I've been doing it for two years, and it's effortless, effortless, effortless. I've been doing just protein and fat Good. for a few weeks. Yeah, and I lost ten pounds doing that. And, um, and you can. Are you hungry ever? No, <laughs> right? you're, you're fully and so you just keep doing but it. But I did have um t- like sometimes you just what you know. Yeah. I did have uh, a chicken wrap yeah. earlier so I had the wrap, you know. Yeah, I I just know that I love carbs so much if I start chipping I'll I go. I start going crazy. I'll man. go. Yeah. So yeah. I just stay on it without it and I'm great. Dude, I really fucking am. rice. Get, pot, I go nuts. Don't do it. I know. And get the Get the heavy cream going with your coffee. Mm. Heavy cream and use just a little bit. And that in your coffee, it, your set. It, yes, it's really good. Yeah. So it's called the uh, NSNG diet, hashtag NSNG. Oh, wait a minute. But so this is the thing like, so my fucking wife emailed our physician over oh, the weekend, okay. CC'd me, and like, my husband is a maniac and he's eating just animals. Okay. Like, you know. Look, I, let me tell and you. And then he wrote back, he was like, that doesn't sound good. Uh, you gotta check your cholesterol soon. And my I was cholesterol. Like, I'm not gonna fall into your homosexual <laughs> propaganda trap. I wanna eat real food. 
Yes, real food. And that's that generally is the note. Things that aren't in a package, things that have one ingredient. like it's What about baked. cholesterol? My, it, 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 I think it depends on your genetic makeup. Mm-hmm. My cholesterol literally... Oh, my dad's straight. What else? <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah. But literally never been better on this diet. How come? I, because, because there's a whole guy named Dave Feldman has a whole theory about this. And it ha- it has to do with how your body sees and, and, and modulates cholesterol. And HDL is probably a bigger deal than we knew. And I could never get my HDL up. Mm-hmm. This made my HDL go up and my triglycerides go down, which is probably an important parameter. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what should happen on a high fat diet. And you are eating like uh, beef, bacon, salmon, bacon. Yeah. Okay. Never had a better cholesterol. Now right. I am on Vitor in a tiny dose, okay. which I've been on since I was in my thirties because I have horrible vascular disease. Mm-hmm. So I've been concerned about this forever. And just to give you a, just a, I don't want to get, get off track here, but, but um, I've been worried about it, worried about it, worried about it. So I got on Vitor very early but never could get the HDL up, never could get the triglycerides and down. And this. And this. And so then I thought, okay, well, let's see if this is actually having any effect because we have all this horrible vascular disease. I had a calcium score done last week, 0.0. 0.0. So for me... Perfect. And it probably has to, has to do with my apolipoprotein metabolism, which is affected by insulin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and apolipoproteins are the one that put the oxidized cholesterol into the arteries. So it's for my genetics, this is clearly something good. I don't mm. know... I don't know for everybody. I'm not right. recommending it for everybody. On a short-term basis, I know it works. Yeah. Long-term, it's good for me. Yeah. So I, I mean, go. that's fast. I mean, I, isn't it kind of a bummer like that literally every week, you know, somebody will be like, I, you know, All on the some com- platform, they'll go, you're eating a what? Yeah. You should be doing this way. Right. And then there's a whole movement behind, that's it right. should be just be plant-based. There's a woman named Kate Shanahan, who's a biochemist and a really good physician. Mm-hmm. And she was the nutritionist for the uh, Lakers for a while. And she is a, she's a scientist. Yeah. And she, I was talking to her, she caught my attention once because I was talking to her on the Dr. Drew podcast. And I said, um, she goes, look, nutrition is so complicated. The biochemistry in reality is so complicated. We can't say anything except a couple of things. And she, she has a big deal about uh, plant oils that mm-hmm. we should be avoiding, though that's maybe one of our big problems. Really? A- and that we never give our bodies enough time to metabolize our own fat. We shouldn't be snacking, which is also really interesting. Yeah. And she, and she has a couple other things. She has a new book coming out called like uh, Fat Burn Fix or something. And, she, and you can only say little things with certainty about nutrition. That's why it's all such a Michigan. You could say in a sense that you're both saying that vegans are fucking idiots. Uh, in a sense. Yeah. Uh, so says Tom Segura. Take that. Get your uh, tweet Shove him. Your but tweet him at Tom Segura. Look for him uh, everywhere as Tom Segura. Please send your cards and letters his direction. Uh, yep. Not mine. Uh, but I did see something about. Uh, there was a little meme I saw about pe- who should go to hell. No, ath- should atheists go to hell as opposed to people who make their cats be vegans? Mm, yes. <laughs> so, I think isn't that a Rogan bit? Maybe I don't know. I saw I it. I, saw a, it. I think it's one of his bits. That's very good. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the new direction of the show. So people should call in with all their stuff, right? Whatever yeah, man. It might be. I mean, I think that the, look, the fun, like I know it's, a, I love being able to talk to you. And yeah. I think, um, you know, when guests come on, they feel the same way. And I think the audience goes, you know, it's great to leave a voicemail. It's great to have an email read, yeah. but it's more interesting yeah. to work this out or have this discussion with you. Yep. And oh, I actually, oh. you know, when I hear that, I go, that makes just perfect sense to me. Right, because it's, it's, a, it's a relationship that happens uh, on the air yes. and th- stuff comes out of that that doesn't come out just from a voice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, the voice messages are interesting. We learn yeah. a lot about yes. these people, but it's but the you, answer as opposed to exactly. dynamic. Exactly, there's no follow-up. You, yeah. you can't then, pro- you know, what about this factor? Speaking of this factor, how's my friend Bert? Well, he's back on the road, and it looks like it. Um, <laughs> he he was here earlier today. So he's losing weight too. What you're saying? Well, <laughs> he said he's like I can't seem to get below uh, this number. I'm like, what's hmm. the number? Uh, weight wise for him, he said he can't seem to get below two thirty seven, uh, which I know is the ideal American Medical Association weight. It's ideal, by the way, for me at five ten. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's that, and. Um, you know, he said he's been eating a lot of pizza and uh, drinking a bunch, but I having a great time. I wonder why he can't lose weight. I, I don't know. So, it's so weird. He said he, they arrived in Boston and he ordered like uh, 12 pizzas and eight bottles of wine and then got on the bus and they ate and drank those. 
And then this weekend... And then he drinks with the fans, too. How does he keep this up? Oh, yeah. He announces the bar from the stage. Uh, and then he meets them there. And he feels an obligation to do this, right? Like, but dude, it's so fun. Right. It's, it's, it's like being in college again. Uh, he loves it. <laughs> yeah. He loves it. And, uh, and uh, Leanne's okay? Going to survive this? And I mean, I think Leanne just knows what she's got. You know what I mean? There's nothing she can do. She loves him no matter what. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. But I mean... And, and I thought... I think he's... He was talking about maybe taking up smoking cigarettes. Oh. So I'm Why? serious. He just said it was fun. He did it, I think, at a bar. Ugh. And I was like, Why does he just take up crack? I don't just, know. All the way. I just, uh, as soon as I did. He would it, be much more fun on crack, I'm sure of that. Really? I mean, until the psychosis kicks in, which. Could was, we get him to try crack? Don't do that, please. <laughs> don't please. I was going to get him a carton of cigarettes. Could, could you get him to, to, to start crack? Of course you could. Yeah. Because he liked cocaine uh, back in the day. I know. And if, if somebody in the audience at the bar said, hey, dude, come on, come on. Smoke this crack. Yeah. He'd probably do it. What would be like the worst thing for Bert to try? Like, meth, no, meth. Meth? We'd never get him back. Really? Mm -hmm. Like he has the type of personality that he would just. It, he's already kind of manic -y and stuff. Yes. And this would send him whoosh, off. Off his, the way. His brain would not be the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to say in the cocaine will not so I be much better. Should not try you, to get him to smoke meth. You should not do that. Um, he should not do that. What if he I, injected meth? Can you do that? You can do It's possible to inject meth. He should not do that. Is uh, it better than smoking it? A little bit. What if I did that? Uh, it's a little bit better than smoking it. Okay. And if you smick, if you put in a little heroin, <laughs> yeah. it'll take the edge off a little bit. Oh, perfect. Yeah, he could be a little less aggro. Because I think he might need a few like um, like uh, he could use, opiates, you know, just di dial it down a little bit. He could use something to dial it down for sure. Which would be like oxys or something? More like a seizure medication. Oh, really? <laughs> like a mood stabilizer. Would Lithium. That, Lithium would help him out? Yeah, oh yeah. Would he be like more tolerable to be around? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and, and how's Isla doing? L last time I talked to him, <laughs> yeah. last time I talked to him, she um, had come to understand that he was on stage. She'd now seen his performance not just talking about how cool and nice she is. Yes. Which is what she had thought he was talking about. Right. She's not, was not particularly enthusiastic about well, it. Well, yeah, he, even on the podcast, he was like, uh, took my daughter driving and his older daughter, Georgie, he's like, this fucking idiot is driving. And I was like, do you think your daughter wants to hear that? <laughs> like this fucking idiot driving. <laughs> Bert. For her first time. Her first time. You asked about Tom's behavior. What about yours? Have you seen Bert's behavior lately? Oh What's up God. with my behavior? You can be honest. I, Tom asked about it. Bert asked I mean, Bert it. asked about it. He said, so, have you seen Tom lately? And I had not seen it, but definitely he'd seen some behavior. That, what behavior? I think calling vegans homosexuals and things like that. Oh, that's normal. I, I should say it. I mean, I don't think that they really are. I know that. It's, you're being yeah, a joke. Yeah, just being silly, man. You're being silly. I know. Yeah. But uh, we live in a world where silly meets cancel. <laughs> oh, I know. It's so just, I feel like it's lightening up a little bit, though. Yeah, a little bit. I do. I uh, I just think we're gonna get where it feels like it's deflating. Like people are just like, okay, okay, let's just get on. With I feel like going. that side is oh. getting more vocal. The side of like, all right, enough already, is getting more vocal. I mean, that people are allowed to say that. Maybe the, yeah, people are are being allowed to be like, I just. You know how people are allowed to go like, I just don't talk about politics. I yes. just don't. Yes. Yeah, but so, but I, th I feel like before that would be like, all right, then. Yes. All right. But now it's like, yeah, relief. Good. Yes. Let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. I, I think people are just sort of getting back to being humans together again. And, right. And then maybe then we'll start to talk about politics and share something about it. You know what I mean? Rather yeah. than conflict. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just feel it's coming a little bit. Yeah. Um, speaking of coming our way, I understand you have some uh, clips to share. There's some you. really exciting stuff yes. that I want you to weigh in I on. I can't wait. Um... One of our all-time, oh, okay, we'll go here first. Um, I well, don't, I do not understand TikTok. You don't? I don't get it. I think Christina had to adjust my TikTok settings and stuff. You have to have a graduate degree from a like a major university to open a TikTok account. Yeah. So maybe that's okay. What it is? I have one. You are, but I don't. Where did you to go to school? I, I went to Amherst College and then SC Medical School. So I oh, they should allow degree. you to open an account. You would think. Um, yeah. you would let think. me see here. Uh, so this is a. This is actually one you, we should not pr tell you anything. <laughs> okay, just, good. Just um, he's a favorite. There's a cool guy. No, it's a lady. Oh, it's a cool gal. And uh, <laughs> and uh, let's. It's a it's a cool zur. It's a zur. Cool, cool zam zur. Um, 
but go ahead and just, yeah, we'll talk about it in a moment. Go ahead. So my poly people, isn't it just the most amazing feeling when your partner finds a new girlfriend or a new partner and you get to just soak up all that NRE and knowing that somebody loves your other half as much as you do and <laughs> waking up, they're still asleep and seeing their phone going off, knowing that that's their new love, just sending the messages and waiting for them to get up in the morning. My husband found himself a girlfriend. It's one of our best friends and I am so incredibly happy. I can't share this on Facebook, but I get to share it here because I just can't hold it in. She's so amazing and they're so great together. And I love seeing them holding hands and ah, my poly people. What's been your favorite thing? Ooh, look how red her cheeks got. Just yeah. Me. I got a million questions. There's a lot of questions. Okay, so one of the things about this, first of all, is there's a debate about whether or not she's being genuine. In other words, is she... I believe her. I believe her. I believe her too. I'm, I'm of the camp that believes Not her. only do I believe her, she says some things about her enthusiasm for her husband's partner mm -hmm. and her eyes go totally somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Like I see like something flash across them yeah. in the pain anger zone. Uh, and I would expect that. And she is disconnected from all that, which is right. kind of fascinating. That is fascinating. Uh, and the thing that, good for her, I, God bless her, I'm glad she's on some level feeling enthusiastic about her husband's... Or masking her rage. Uh, 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 where the rage will come mm -hmm. when unexpected feelings emerge. And mm -hmm. that's the part in the um, between the husband and the girlfriend. And that's the part I find problematic is that when you get intimate with another person you can't control that you don't get to predict how that's going to play the out will play they out. just sometimes they explode and then the tiktoker is sort of mm, you're going to be just sitting on the sideline just watching all the time now right if you like or just get out of here you know who or, knows what they're going to say or in like a lot of people's um you know estimation uh pretending that you're thrilled about it right well if people you, are if you've watched any of the reality shows about um polyamorous yep. relationship. Have you watched any of those? I've seen, yes, I have. How happy do those women look? Never. They ne don't look yeah. happy. Well, usually there's one that's kind of okay. Yeah. A, but, but all the rest of them had it kind of foisted on them and are tolerating it. Yeah. And it's... I, th that's not the, my idea of happiness. It, did, it, it does seem like... Because like, you don't want to in a blanket way, dismiss no, a certain I, listen, group of Do people. whatever you want, everybody. Of course, do whatever I you want. I endorse everything, but, whatever you please. But there is armies of medical and psychiatric and, and the mental health professionals that are out there just trying to help people with two in a relationship because right. that's nearly impossible to navigate in a healthy way. Three, add so many layers and yes. exponential problems. I would not go there as a professional. It would be too much. Be right. Too much. That NRE, you know what that is? Right. You it's, told me. It's new relationship energy. Ah. So that's like when you're dating somebody new, you have all that, you know, yeah. those feelings. Does that mean he wants to screw his primary person with the red cheeks more? No. No, that no. means that like she's she she's witnessing that he has that, that kind of that youthful new glow. glow. That new glow. Yes. Oh, I would love to see this guy. Yes, yes. He's um, a cool dude, no but doubt. But do you believe that she's as happy as she's saying she is? I believe that the part of her we're talking to is that happy. Ah. I'm fearful there's other parts lurking in the background and mm. some traumatized parts of her that are Because it feels like re traumatized. From an uneducated person from an uneducated perspective that people who are like the, of the poly people yeah. out there yeah. that really a smaller percentage than those who are active are like a small percentage of amongst those who are active in it are actually as happy and content and it, okay with it. It seems. It seems. I don't it. have the data. Yeah. My data is big love and watching reality TV yeah. shows. And I've talked to a few of these people and I have talked to some that really claim they're fun, they're great, and they're happy yep. and stuff. They are not um, not all the same in the relationships. Yep, differing degrees of happiness there. But if it works for them, who am I to? There say? was the um, there was the one on Showtime where I remember the episode. I one think of the those episodes. are the ones I talked to. Oh yeah, one yeah. of them where the guy you could, the guy was always like, "This new girl's fucking awesome." I know. And his wife was like, "Cool." <laughs> and then they got together to have a three way. 
and the wife was like, I don't think I can do this. And the guy was like, what's the, this what's is the problem? Over. Yeah. So he and, was, he was driving a lot. Of and then way. he did. And as then often there's a driver, they shut it down. They shut down that experience. And he was like, what happened? And she was like, well, I just was feeling a certain, like, like you said, an unexpected How feeling. How dare emerged. she have a feeling? That's yes. the part that, that this is the part I have a problem with. You're not allowed to be not okay with everything. Right. And that is not okay. Right. They, they, you can. Are be you okay. in or not? You That's can the, be yeah. okay as much as you want, and not okay as much as you want. But right. don't pretend that you're one way and, and demand to be another because yes. the driving partner is demanding it. That's coercion. Yeah. That's sort of cult. That's abuse. And then I also remember in another relationship, I think the the woman was super excited that she was going to fluid bond with Jesse, and that meant that for the first time she was going to sleep with a guy outside of her marriage yeah. but without a condom so uh. he could jizz in her. Uh. And uh, she was like, it's a pretty big move in our world and I'm real excited about it. How'd, how'd, how'd the cool guy like The it? husband was like, yeah. He goes, uh, you know, I think it's pretty hot. <laughs> he was he was real excited. Oh, he was into it? He was. Okay. And, and he seemed genuine, you know? He, and he, is it because he was overwhelmed by I trying think to keep everybody happy? He seemed like he was actually perhaps genuinely by so ah. i think he was like more turned on oh by the well guy that's an interesting way to express that right yeah interesting yeah. cool yeah. dudes cool very cool, cool. everybody was very cool yeah. in the whole yeah, thing nice. all right what else we got accidental brown lady oh, oh yeah do you well, want to set that up tom well or is there something else you want to get into um yeah i, I kind of want to check out um <laughs> want to check out piss spots <laughs> what piss this spot? is a new show have you seen this no oh it's called Piss Spots? Yeah. This is episode two. Is it? And, and so hold, set it up for me. Well, there's a guy and... Um, a cool guy. A very cool guy. Uh -huh. And uh, he decided to, you know, like a lot of us now, you don't need a production crew. You can make your own show. Right. Right? You and, don't... I mean, we all have a camera yeah, on yeah. our phones. Oh, so. I love it. It's like the movie Tangerine. Just did the whole thing on a phone. This guy took the initiative. He came up with a premise of a show. And uh, he decided to film it. And it's not commercials. They're not spots like commercials. No, it's like a spot as in a place. So these are. This is a show about sp spots to piss. Exactly. Oh, this is too good. All right. Uh, episode two of piss spots. I want a random road. I'm pulling my dick out. I want a <laughs> random road. I'm gonna piss in this monster can. In a well, can, monster, yeah. monster drink can. Yeah. Well, that that's that's not fair. He needs to go f show us the spot. The the spot is where he's at on the road. I know, but he could be anywhere. He hasn't shown us the spot. Well, we'll get there. Oh, okay. I'm on a random road. Uh, should have been His piss spot says drive the driver's seat. About fifty. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm pissing into, and I'll tell you where I am. Oh my God. In a second. People that are just listening to the podcast, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it gets pretty good. It gets pretty good? Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Needed. Much needed. Yeah. So I'm thinking this series is going to be wherever I need to fucking piss when I'm drunk. While well, he's driving? He's driving. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, I pissed on my, myself. Sorry about that, cool guy. Let's do what we normally do. We'll pour it out. Uh, actually, you want to see the surroundings? Yep, there you go. Oh, there's the... That's the surroundings. Let's pour it out. I think he missed the premise of his... Oh. Yeah. The premise was about the spot, though. He's supposed to be telling it's us It's also, about the I don't spot. know if you noticed, it, it seems to be uh, maybe late morning, oh. perhaps middle of the day. Oh, I expected <laughs> nothing less. But hang on. Yeah. Look at the little gutter there by the seat. Uh-huh. Wow. What do you... Uh, I see pee. I see wrappers. I see just filth. Yeah. And what is that white thing? Are you trying to tell me loogies, loogies that the, on the creator side of, of Piss Spots is perhaps a trashy human being? I didn't say trashy human. I, I mean, said he's just ill-kempt. He has Ill questionable Ill hygiene? Ill-kempt. Ill Ill this spot, the uh, 102 break, breakdown lane. Oh, I think you would <laughs> call throw it. Up uh, or take a crap. Yeah. <laughs> I think comparatively to the seawall, I'd say I'd give it eh, seven, eight. Very seclusive. I like it. Well, he doesn't give any coordinates, though. How do we get there? I think he said he said a highway. Okay, there. all and right. So if he, he lived he right there to the seawall, because episode one, which you've missed, uh, of piss spots, 
had uh, five out of ten piss bottles. Oh. Um, but you want to know something that's actually very striking? He's ranked by piss bottles? Yeah, he uh, ranks them out of... Okay. Um, this is the last episode of Piss Bots he hasn't posted since. Oh, my God, what happened We him? think there may have been perhaps an arrest in his life. Oh. But in, it's in pure other speculation. Words, so by, you mean by giving adequate coordinates and doing public inappropriately public things that the police might be interested in that? They might be. They might They be. might recognize, hey, that's the host of Piss Bots. <laughs> Can I get your autograph? Piss spots. Sorry. <laughs> on this on this misdemeanor form? We know that you do these when you're drunk only. So. Uh yeah. The cops may be interested in that. Now, right. They did he did uh, tip that hat a little bit. I want to ask you a, a serious question about um Piss spots. what happens in the mind mm -hmm. and saying words. So I was on Larry King mm -hmm. um a while ago and the uh, that the, thing he does with the internet. Yeah, it's like a yeah. studio yeah, like yeah. this and he Over just in you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we're talking. Um, anyways, I just wanted to know if you think this is, could this happen to anybody or is this age indicative? Go ahead. Okay. I don't know if we have. Oh, this the, is, you have the clip with you with we, Larry? We, yeah. Right here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Starring alongside Mark Wahlberg and Rose Byrne in Instant Family. All right. You share the screen with Mark, Ball, Wal, Wal, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. You got yeah. it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. Know him a long time. What was that like? So. I, maybe some dentures too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, but yes, it, 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 yes, that's aging related stuff. And it is, and maybe meds too. Meds can do that. I mean, I don't mean drugs. I mean yeah. medication. Right, it makes your mouth really dry and can be very difficult oh, to, to say say a word. And so mouth dryness, eye dryness, very common in the elderly. Larry's not a young man anymore. He's eighty six. Yeah, and so that's all dryness meets uh, dis motor discoordination meets you know you can't uh you know run and uh run run laps anymore either right you can't right so a lot of motor stuff starts kicking in um because it like that that's obviously just like this qu quick little moment but sometimes you see that you know like really played out with people right like where you yeah it's hard where, to where they start mumbling and yeah yeah and go really bad but that usually is with cognitive problems too mm -hmm. and i'm I, well, it's so uncomfortable, right? I, it's but it's also like so engaging. You still, you know, it is cool. I just want to hear it over and over. It is cool. I feel bad for him, but but he's cognitive. He's Mark all all Wal there, which Wal is good for Wal him. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, I had a great time with him. I love Larry. Um, uh, I've known him for a long, long time. Yeah. He's how I got my my uh, show on HLN. He is. He had me sit in for him a couple times. Wow. And uh, it was before I really knew how to do talk shows. And you sit in that his seat, you know, and host the show. And you're like, I knew I was in an important place. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like a sure. very significant place. And the first time I did it, I was freaked out completely and shitting myself. And the opening bit was four satellite feeds from all over the world, each with different delays. Right, and I was having, and they go, and your out is six minutes and forty three seconds, and then you know, the next out is eleven minutes and twelve seconds. Like there's satellite stuff; it's all direct out. We're three minutes in. I'm trying to deal with these, um, all these different feeds and things, and all of a sudden, the stage manager jumps in and goes, "The, the international satellite just went out. Never happened in the history of CNN. The entire satellite system went down, and I was like, we were just out. We we're just black, and I and I was like, oh my god." the worst thing possible just happened and I had nothing to do with it. And it completely calmed me down. Oh. Like, what could be worse than this? But then the, what did you do? Well, then they, I go, so after about a minute, they go, we're coming back. They ran a commercial. And then I go, am I doing the 613 break or am I doing the 811 break? Which, which is it? Or, you know, there's there's two breaks coming. One was two minutes away and one was like nine minutes away. Yeah. And, and they go, we'll let you know. Boom, on the air. And they did not let me know. And I didn't know if I was having a two minute conversation or a nine minute conversation, which was challenging. And then the two minutes passed. No one said go to commercial. And they went And did you, were your guests in studio or they were no, all? No, they were satellite feeds. They were all satellite feeds. Yeah, I think I might have a one in the studio, but yeah, and three satellite feeds or something with different delays. That must, you might, I bet one. you got a rush out of it though, too, right? Um, but it, I did, I was not having any kind of rush when it started right. because it was too much. But when the satellite went out, I kind of was able to calm down. And Jesus, enjoy it. Man. but as a result of that, I ended up getting a show at HLN. That's so, wild. Yeah. Crazy. No, I had a great time on the show, but, um, that, I don't know. I just, any, any pronunciation like that really excites me, you know? I know that. And, um, 
I know how you you're compassionate. He uh, <laughs> he. Also, I love his interview style where he's like, Dr. Drew, where'd you go to college? Is that what he's asking you? Well, yeah, stuff like that, you know. And then you answer. How do you answer? You'd go in Amherst College. You have a favorite food? <laughs> Pizza. What food do you not like? Collard greens. You ever play sports? Yes. <laughs> What's a food you can't stand? I don't really like oysters. I hate <laughs> eggs. You hate eggs? I hate them. Get out of here, I man. I hate them. We'll see? Anyway, no, poached, fried. Can't stand them. Really? He, well, at least he, he, he pitches the ball back to you. He does. That's good. A lot of interviewers don't even listen. Yeah. Well, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's debatable. Uh, pleasure. Chocolate souffle. Soccer souffle? Chocolate souffle. Oh, chocolate souffle. Yeah. Ah, you fucking... It takes a while. It does. Yeah. Wait, wait, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong? Chocolate souffle? Soccer souffle? Guilty pleasure. Oh. Chocolate souffle. Soccer souffle. Cho Come on. That's a great one. I can't go with you, Tom. Saka where you want to go? I can't go there. I cannot go there. I know where you want to go. I want to go. No, you don't get to go there. Why not? It's my show. Saka souffle. Mark 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 Mark. All right. All right. Mark Mark. Okay, I'm sorry. You're a cruel man. All right. Take a little break so I can tell you about our first sponsor, Bombas. Uh, we are so fortunate, Dr. After Dark, to have great sponsors. And when I first heard about Bombas and their socks, I was like, eh, socks. I love socks, but what's what's the big deal? Literally yesterday morning, I was putting on my Bombas socks going, oh, I get it. They have really done something different. They've done something for... They've created something special for every need, right? Bombas has made different performance socks designed from everything from running to hiking to cycling and more. Whatever you're into, particularly when it's sports or whatever it might be, Bombas can help your performance socks and styles specifically for what it is you're doing, whether it's basketball, tennis, running, golf, and more. They make them with a lightweight poly cotton blend, which means no matter how hard you're working out, your feet stay cool and dried and comfortable, never sweaty. Unless you need something for the snow, they've got great stuff for insulation as well, too. Bomba socks provide support in places you didn't even know you needed. I will vouch for that. Uh, like, for instance, your arches. Each sock is built with a special arch support system that is supportive but not too light. It's like a nice, nice hug around your foot. It really is. They've really kind of figured out. This is something different. Constantly pausing your treadmill to adjust the twisted socks or bunched up. Mm -mm, not with Bombas. They've designed left-right contouring and a Y-stitched heel so they stay perfectly in place. Uh, ever notice the annoying toe seam most socks have? The little ridge on the top of the toe? Bombas got rid of it. Gone. That's it. It's just smooth sailing all the way across the top of your foot so you don't feel that tightness at the, at the tip. Did you know that socks are the number one most requested item in a homeless shelter? And God, with the Bomba socks, I, I see now why people would be so enthusiastic about it. They were created specifically to change that for the homeless. For, so for every pair you buy, and you know I'm lit up about the homeless problem, for every pair you buy, Bombas donates a pair to someone in need. And because their, their socks are so... They're so well insulated and so well designed, they really will make a difference for somebody. So go to bombas.com slash Drew, not Dr. Drew, just D-R-E-W. Go there today and you'll get 20% off your first purchase. It is B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Drew for 20% off bombas.com slash Drew. Our next sponsor is Candid. If you're unhappy with your smile, tired of feeling conscious in photos, why not make this the year you straighten your teeth with Candid? Candid delivers clear aligners directly to you and straightens your teeth for thousands less than braces. There are things like this. I'm one of those people that was like, ah, I got to get that all worked out. This did it. You don't even notice I've done it, except you've won the, well, does the smile look better? It's unlike braces. Candid, the clear aligners, they're comfortable, they're removable, they're invisible. I can, maybe I'll put a pair in so you can see what they look like. That's it. You see anything? You can transform your smile without noticing a thing. Plus, you never have to set foot in a doctor's office or a waiting room. Your treatment is prescribed and monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist. Unlike other companies, Candid only works with orthodontists, never general dentists. With other remote clear aligner options, you may never hear from a doctor at all as you go through treatment. That means your treatment will be designed by an expert in tooth movement with Candid. And with Candid, not only will your treatment be designed by an experienced orthodontist, it also includes remote monitoring by that same orthodontist 
throughout. That's an important piece of this. You'll never have to wonder how everything is going because your orthodontist, orthodontist will have to keep an eye on your treatment from wherever you are. And again, that monitoring, just like with any good medical care, in case they need to make adjustments, they will be on top of it. Maybe you're looking ahead to a wedding season, a special event. Typical treatment is about six months. You'll see results well before that. Learn more about the Candid's process and get a complimentary 3D scan of your teeth at Candid Studio near you. It is the simplest, freest way to get started. So if you're ready to take the first step towards straighter teeth for a limited time, you get started with $75 off by using the code Dr. Drew, candidco.com slash Dr. Drew. Again, that's C-A-N-D-I-D-C-O, candidco.com slash D-R-D-R-E-W. Use code D-R-D-R-E-W for $75 off at candidco.com slash D-R-D-R-E-W. All right. Okay. 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 Can I, can I set one up for you? Please. For one? You, as most of America... <sighs> Have been transfixed. I think people speaking of transfixed yeah. like me feeling bad. Yeah. Because when I feel bad on your mom's house or on my show, yeah. that's what people like. Yeah, of course. So well done today, Tom. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Keep going. That is the goal. I get it. I see what it is. Of uh, the show. But <sighs> okay. You, mm -hmm. as most of us, have been completely fascinated by um, a gentleman that the masses now know as Fed Smoker. Fascinated. Um, we have footage of him at a city council meeting. This is the best news I've had all year. Uh, unfortunately, it's not of the city council oh. feed on him. Oh. It's, it's him filming the city council. What? But well, just take a look. So um, I would like to thank you for having a great police chief and a great sheriff. And you, none of you guys are getting this stamp on your face, which is a real, a real great thing, you know. So is that New Mexico? That's New Mexico. I flag, think it's right? Arizona. Right? Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you tell me if I can get a police report on this uh, with normal counsel out there? No meth uh, in Arizona. This woman? No meth. No meth. No meth in Arizona. Okay. Well, you got tribal cops needing some feds to come see him because I'm going to arrange that if I can with everything I know. What? What's he even talking about? Do you see what what stamp he was talking about on his pouch? I saw it. I don't know what it Did means. You, it said baby raper. Oh. So, so he's not going to give them a baby raper. He said, stamp. you guys are really, like, it's good that you're not getting the baby raper. Because you're not baby rapers, you people. Well, he decides, and uh, he said that he puts the stamp sometimes on cops' faces. Well, I, I know he intends to yeah. do that. Yeah. He's mentioned that more than a couple times. Baby raper. Look he walks that. around with that pouch, which I feel like is, I don't know. Look at, look at all, again, look at all how clean everything is. Those hands, that pouch, how he's chewed his nails off. You think that he may ingest meth sometimes? Sometimes you do. Oh yeah. So he's a he's a. Meth. I'm, I hope that's what this is. Really? Because if this also is... look at those glasses. Look at the uh, the part that goes. Well, first of all, there's no fr there's no glass in the frame. There is no glasses in but, his uh, sunglasses. But the 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 arm of it, you know, that sits over the ear. They look yes. like blades. <laughs> blades meaning. I mean, look at you can see. Where the string is, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 like it's metal. Yeah, yeah. The part that sits over your ear. It, yeah, almost like it's a like well, like a Google Glass. Like there's a computer mm -hmm. in that in there. Yeah, but I don't think that's the prototype. No, I, think, I don't uh, think so either. I think he made that one. I think he probably did. Shows his creative genius. And then all the duct tape. It's not even duct tape. What is that? Like a like gaffer's gaffer's tape. tape. Yeah. yeah, all around electrical everything. tape. Electrical tape. Yeah, around yeah. everything. Um, that that picture. His glasses really pretty much sums up fed smoker yeah it does right i mean that is tells his whole story right there mm. oh boy i hope he's on meth because this is all just I mental illness stamp on your face uh oh keep yeah. going this is why we have to change the definition of gravely disabled everybody really fed smoker can be helped in his current condition this is going to go bad trust me this is going to go bad really Oh yeah, may have what? already by now. Was that what? it? That's all we get to see of it? Well, he then he talked to a cop outside, and uh, well, I mean that clip just ends right there. He he uploads sometimes like fifteen second videos. Oh, and titles it like city council, blah, blah, blah. yeah. And then there's another clip on the same channel uploaded under a different title that he filmed a minute later, and okay. it's twenty seconds long. All right, see that. So that there's there's things like that in in um, so very exciting. I don't know if you have any more queued up. But uh, I don't have any more oh. Fed Smoker queued up. I oh. mean, that was, that was oh. the clip that we had ready. I think oh. last time we were on his YouTube page, but I think that might be a little bit more difficult to find. 
Okay. I'll see if I can pull it up. Hard to find his YouTube. Oh, on the YouTube page. Well, he he has 40 different YouTube channels. Oh, my God. All active. Yes, all active. God. And he selects depending on... How the, come the type the cops, of investigation that he is conducting. The cops go after piss spot guy and not Fed Smoker. Fed Smoker has a history with the with the cops. I am no doubt about that. <laughs> I, but he goes and tries to educate them. Did all. you ever see the one with him um at with the old guy at the park? Oh yeah. Oh you saw that oh, one. Oh yeah. Okay. And the old guy finally uh, the old uh, guy where you're like you're telling the old guy like drive on, drive on, get out of there, get and out. Did, did you see the one of him with um about wanting a woman to come clean? You saw that one? I think I did. It was in his car, right? No, it's in his house. Oh, no. He oh, had no, a no. house at one no, point. No, no, no. <laughs> um, what's that one that you just pulled up? What I know, that? Nadav, you're teasing us. What is that? What he has so that? many different looks, Fed Smoker. Uh, they all say meth, though. Uh, <laughs> what's, what is it? Say? Oh, he's got sunglasses with sunglasses on. Hi there. Oh, he's at a piano. <laughs> uh-uh. If he can play the piano, I will. I will die. We're gonna wrap up around ten thirty. Okay. We got the choir rehearsing behind here. He's at like a church or something. Look at he's got a carbine oh, around his neck. What? Traveler and I'm uh, low on sugar right now. Oh, he wants food. Get paid hopefully tonight. Uh, but I'm kind of strapped right now. You know, now. I'll, I'll put you in time. Like I said, I'm the guest pastor, yeah, so yeah. I don't know anything about. Okay. It. But okay. I, I give me a little bit and maybe I'll put Just you give in touch. Five minutes and I'll be done. Okay. Here. He wants I'll food, right? Like we, like or said, cash. Or in. cash. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I'll make it real quick before anybody gets here. So it sounds like he has played the piano, but now he's just banging on it. Yeah, but he definitely has played that before. <laughs> he's <laughs> definitely played that before. Okay, if you say so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I notice he in a lot of videos he does this. Yeah, like <laughs> like meth addicts do. Yeah. Oh. Really? Yeah. And and he seems and by the way in this one he seems a little more down, right? Definitely, right? He it's, said his sugar was low. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. He's getting paid tonight. So he can boost his sugar once he gets some money. Yeah. And then maybe give himself a haircut. Boy, I feathering it, brother. (laughs) Yeah. We we should beg him to do another haircut video. You think so? (laughs) Because it made you so happy. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's the greatest thing you ever saw. So, yeah. All right. Is there anything else for us? Because I got a lot of great emails. Yeah. Did you, by the way, did you find the cleaning, the woman? Can you find that? Lady Fed Smoker? Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll pull that up. Oh, the cleaning. What is Lady Fed Smoker? You mean there's a lady version? That I do have ready to go, but I think that's on to the next subject. Uh, g- give me one second, I'll bring up the, the cleaning one. Okay. Why, why you do that, let me, um, let me do an email, okay? Because I have such good emails here. This is from, it doesn't say, he says, uh, keep mine tight. Uh, his opening statement is, hey Hitler, does that mean something to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just a fan. Okay. Uh, well, so there was a lady who um, used to make videos um, post them on YouTube and she would start, she would, she would direct them to Hitler and she'd be like, Hey Hitler, it's me. Oh. And, and she's actually talking to Hitler. She would talk to Hitler. I yeah. see. Yeah. Do you know there was a sitcom called Heil Honey, I'm home? No. Oh yes. When would this come out? This is in like the, like the seventies and it had a full theme song. Heil Honey, Heil Honey. Really? Did, oh yeah. How'd that go over? Uh, Nadav, look up Heil Honey, I'm Home on YouTube. Heil Honey, And uh, you home. need to see this. It's a train wreck of biblical proportions. Wow. You'll be happy that I show this to you. But first, let me talk about this uh, email. My little sister just found out she has vaginal agenesis, Tom. We took her to the ER because she was having abdominal pain. Turned out she had a cyst on her ovary. Reviewed a scan. I found out that she was missing her left kidney and missing her uterus. She has uh, never had her period. She's 16. She's freaking out because the doctor said she doesn't have a vagina. We tried to explain to her that a vagina was basically a canal that was closed in the middle. Do you have any advice in getting her through this? We asked about the chromosomes. And the doctor said that she is probably normal. So you ever heard of ambiguous genitalia? Uh, no. So a lot of people are born with sort of not fully male and not fully female. A lot of people are born like that? I mean, thousands and thousands. Okay. And usually the doctors will test the genetics and then sort of do a surgery to match up with the genetics. That's sort of typically what has been done, though these days people are advocating other things. But but this, you know, 
what what part of things that bothers me about them anybody politicizing that issue is there's all kinds of lots of internal structural issues that can go on as well that he can may or may not be reflected in the external genitalia right and this is one of them she has a genesis of the vagina and the uterus and she's missing a kidney these urogenital dis- deformities as they're called or genital abnormalities are not uncommon mm-hmm. again th- tens of thousands of people with these things she is still a female mm-hmm. and she is still a woman she has an issue with fertility in that she doesn't have a uterus, but she has one ovary. So she can use a, a um, t- teacher that she can use a um, surrogate. A surrogate, yeah. Surrogate. So for your sister, get get her to calm down. These, to, you know, show her that these are it's probably are probably support groups out there with people with urogenital abnormalities. But that she, because she has ovaries, she can look forward to using reproductive technologies to have babies, which is probably what we hear. Which is great. And then she can still have all the uh, experiences of being a mother. um, And not have to worry about being when she coughs and all that good stuff that your wife has complained about many, many times. Absolutely. So, okay. So do you have, uh, which video? What an interesting thing, by the way, that that is a, you know, regular. Uh, It's a, this is the thing that kind of makes me a little irritated with people getting very focused on, ambiguous external genitalia they they confuse that with intersex yeah they confuse it with uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia and they confuse it with internal abnormalities which are equally as common as external abnormalities and they have the same significance meaning nothing to the person just uh, they just add some challenges mm-hmm. nothing to their gender expression other than it would normally be whatever that is for them just they have some biological challenges that med- medic- medicine can help them overcome yeah that's great. all i'm saying um what do we got here oh there it is look look starring neil oh it's on the the one on the left i think maybe the one that is the actual uh song and when was this uh does it say there Heil, honey i'm home look at him there's neil mccall as as adolf there's the actual song yeah uh, because there was a more recent show oh, i don't know if we could play that oh. why what's that because it's, it's oh youtube uh, yeah, uh, YouTube yeah. Will flag it. but 1990 but, uh, well oh, okay can i sing it yeah Cancelled after one episode. It's Heil well, Honey, Heil Honey. Uh, you know, it's Heil Honey, I'm home. Swear to God. And what happened? Because it looks like it says 10 episodes unaired. Right. So that aired and they were like, uh-uh. So somebody woke, somebody became sane. Somebody yeah. in the network went, what the, What are you guys doing? It was his his wacky Jewish neighbors and he and his, and he and his, uh, he and his wife, Ava Braun, we're struggling with uh, Barney and Betty next door who happen to be Jews. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Because there was a and more Antics recent... Antics and Sue. Antics and Sue. I can't believe it was 1990. That's hard for me to believe. Yeah. Wasn't there like a, a show where they, they were also doing like a... Or is it a movie? You know what I'm talking about? Where they Jojo played Rabbit? On, well, I know that Jojo Rabbit, that's like this year. I thought there was another one a few years ago. Making fun of it? Yeah, yeah. Where they played on the idea that like Hitler was, you know... Um, a more normal guy, right? Like, around, oh, I like did playful, see that film. Yeah, you know I, I mean? saw. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I, I, I can't remember what it was called, but I saw it on a plane one time. It, n- oh, not, not a, yeah. This is the house, the Fed Smoker oh. house. He has a he has a suit of well, armor. We think there's there's a couple of theories. We got to examine that, every inch. I'm going to visit him. One is that this although is he was obviously scary. at another time, like maybe when he had his shit more together. Okay. And then the other one is simply that this is not his house. Oh well, that would. <laughs> That would kind of fit. I mean, but, it's, it is clearly, I, I guess it's in the east, right? Well, we've discovered he's sort of Arizona-esque, right? Right. But although that looked a little woodsy in the background it there. It does. Um, but the one-story flat roofs and all speak Arizona. Sure. Right? He's this, real, this was recorded in 2011 also. Okay. Okay. He's right. more chill in this video. You'll, you'll see. of armor, man. Okay. Right. Once again, if you're not a scurvy-ass bitch with a dirty twat, oh, oh, you have is, a good opportunity of coming here to live and clean this house. So this is him toned down a bit? Toned down, uh-huh. offering you an opportunity to, to live He has in a that. bike? Yep. Okay, keep going. Leave all your inquiries and information still on the, this site. The teeth thing's still going yeah. on. You're not scurvy and your twat smells like roses. Give me a holla. That's oh, this, it. He is just too... I don't even want to fuck you. I find my own bitches. I need a house cleaner. He's just too cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it could be all the mania, right? He's a little hypomanic, uh-huh. right? It could all be that. It doesn't have to be the meth. But if I were a betting man, I'd say it was still had a problem back then. You think so? I think so. I think that's probably, and it's probably just progressed. And we lost everything now. Now he's in his car, and that's how it goes. So it's like it's possible that this was his house. It's possible. It's possible. But if it is his house, you'd have to figure that he probably like 
It's actually his mother's house or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and he, but he. Oh could, right, right. Yeah. It's well, a, also you know you look at the curtains. They they don't seem male. They yeah. don't seem a cool guy. They don't seem feds taste. You know. <laughs> they don't say feds. Yeah. yeah. They don't say saga <laughs> souffle. <laughs> Nadav, don't encourage him. <laughs> I'm a 25-year-old man. I occasionally have some light pain or discomfort around my right testicle. It's nothing major, but enough to concern me. I've felt for lumps. There doesn't seem to be any, but I'm somewhat concerned. I'm catching things early is very important in a lot of cases. I hope I'm not overthinking things. Pain in the testicles is common. And testicles ache for lots of reasons. It can mm -hmm. be uh, conge pelvic congestion from the prostate. It can be prostate inflammation. It can be epididymitis. It can be torsion. It twists on itself and blood supply is not That's so common, great. right? It is common. So again, all I can say is you got to get your doctor to check it, but I would not worry about it. I certainly wouldn't worry about cancer, though do check that out too. And again, you've got to kind of get used to feeling. With, cancer feels like a rock, like a pebble in there. Um, Fuck. To explain something to me. Yeah. Because uh, I want to make sure I, you know. I had that ache once again, by the way. Ball ache. I'll check it. Yeah. So uh, our relationship is going good places, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Shush, shush, would you check my balls? Shush, souffle. Shush, souffle. On your mom's house. Would you check it? Yeah. You, and you would handle them and like. If you wish, in front of your wife, happily. Really? Because you're, you're a medical professional. I can do it. Feel me to do it. I need gloves, but I will do it. You can't do it without gloves. I'm not a bare hander. But I mean, I'll, I'll shower. It's okay. I'll do gloves. <laughs> it's just force a habit. All just, right. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, but I want to stay abreast of the coolness that is your mom's house. And I don't quite get how to keep feather in it. Oh. I just need to know more about what that means. What about what feather in it means? And how I could use that. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about it. Yeah, I knew it was cool. That's what I want to be is cool. Is the expression starts meaning one thing. And this I, is when you know you have a great expression. Yeah. From from YMH. Is that, it's like shasha souffle. It's like shasha souffle. It's that you are able to apply it to, so like when, like just glass and it was intended to mean looking through your binoculars, right? Right. But then people started to apply the expression just glass and to things that had nothing to do with that. Like right. they're like, it's Saturday night. I'm just, just glass and yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it, it just, it lends itself to that. It does. So we're, feathering it yeah. initially is, is, is all because fed smoker was setting his hair on fire. So that, oh, and that's what he says when you're feathering, feathering it. I remember feathering that. It. Yeah, he's like you're feathering it, brother. Oh, I see. I went to literal feathers, and yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't make. The so connection. that's where it started, and then now they're applying it to like you know, I'll, I'll post a photo of me on stage and doing stand. They're like, look at your feathering it, brother. <laughs> like that has, <laughs> like it just it, took does, over. Does it does does feathering it mean like you're killing it? It could or, be. Or does it mean just kind of hanging out? Well, that's the thing. It, I think it's the, inten all the, above. the intent of the user. Oh, whoever says so it's like, it. It's like Chinese. It's all in the the, the, the tone. The yes. tone. Um, yeah. I, by Feather the way, it? you know that we have a little history with Garth Brooks? No. Well, we have. Uh-oh. <laughs> we've. Uh, You're going to ruin my relationship with him too? <laughs> are you friends with him? Not really, but. If you can pull up his Instagram, um, I just randomly went to it yesterday. Uh oh, is he talking about you guys? No. Oh no. But I, it's been a while, and I went to the most recent post. Is he feathering it? No. <laughs> uh oh, is he been feathering it? Just click it, <laughs> and then the comments. <laughs> Look, keep feathering it, brother. Oh. First thing. Have happy birthday, G. I would love to see you, but I'm having chest pains. That's from our show. Oh. You just lost your life, buddy. You're John. That's that's Fed Smoker. Oh, it's Stay not. Up. And that, that's the comment. That's one of his things. You just lost your life, buddy. You're oh, oh, oh. I thought he was actually yeah. Fed Smoker. No, making. no. Sue Wu is from us. We want closure, Garth. That's from us. Um, the families need closure. Feather it, brother. Oh, feather it, brother. When you're feathering it, our brother. DD Mega Doo Doo. Alejandro. Is Ari doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> when you're feathering it, brother. Mm -hmm. My aunt Suwu. I mean, it's it's, oh, it's, it's all the it's comments. It's hundred percent you guys. Yeah, thirty-one thousand likes. Is it you? I don't know, man. What what are we looking at there? Well, that's he's doing bar shows uh, this year. Yeah, you know? yeah. So he's like, he does like you know stadiums. And yeah, he's like I'm gonna do some bar shows. Like right. Kinda. And so it's just a, a picture from behind him to the audience. I don't know. I can't. But but his head looks like he lit his head on fire. Oh, does it? I think that's just backlit. Right, because he's got a I hat to, on. I have to go. He has a hat on. Yeah, yeah, it's camo. 
his camo hat on. I think people are reacting to the fact that it looks like he feathered his hair. Mm. I think it looks like he, he lit I his hair on fire. I think maybe. That's the first thing I thought. Keep feathering it, bro. <laughs> I think. I think. One I mean, more year. Would... <laughs> One more pass a break. You're celebrating while the families are desperate to find their loved ones. How is it not in the mainstream news? It's time to lock him away so he can play songs in prison. Thinking of the families that don't get birthdays anymore. I ran into a telescope. Is that? That's from us too. Yeah. There's not one comment that's not from you. <laughs> I, know, I know. Are you so proud of yourself? Uh, and here's, well, let me observe something here. Yeah. It's very Give hard. Give me back my son. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very hard. To, and look, it's, it's, what's his name from MySpace? That's the picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Tom from MySpace. Um, it's very hard. It's a very rare. It's almost a unicorn to get a woman to behave like a screwball. Yeah. And you guys seem to have mastered that. The, the, a lot of those names are female. Oh, yeah, yeah. Women get involved. But for sure. They, that is screwball women behavior. I, hats yeah. off to those women. For, they are. Uh, they're the funniest. They're the best. I know. I, that is like complete. This is this is this is fourth wave. Oh, we just found the first real genuine comment. Well, happy <laughs> it's birthday. from a woman. <laughs> happy birthday! I hope your day is wonderful. Well, everyone else except for her is a fourth wave feminist, mm -hmm. full on. This is this is, is that what it's called? That's what this is. You're seeing it's it. Called it's called fourth wave. The fourth wave. Oh, fourth wave. This is you guys. You've done fourth wave. You've created. You've created the expression of fourth wave feminism. Su hashtag Subu. Someone says, "Do you like your life, Jenny?" <laughs> That's another. That's thing. responding to the only real comment. Yeah, Jesus, man, it really, it really makes me laugh, though. Oh my God, did somebody like announce that they should go on to this? I mean, did some sort of? Did you do it? What'd you do? What'd you do? We had a little campaign a while ago, oh. but we stopped it a long time ago to go after Garth Brooks. Mm -hmm. For what? For being weird. He's not weird. He's so weird. Is he weird? He's socially. Social media weird. Oh, okay. So we were just having fun. We were just like, you know, you must have bodies buried somewhere. And stuff oh, like that. oh, oh, and they, oh, that they, kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he'll he, he probably doesn't even do it himself. He has like a disconnect from like he'll be you know it'll be like an action. He's like, <laughs> hey guys, I'm on tour. And he probably hates it. Yeah, and then it's you a, know that's weird. Oh, Come there on. he is. Is this him? You've never seen this? No. Oh God. Okay, hold on. I got to set it up. All right. This is it from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. He I looks can, waxen. Just I in the... cannot believe you've never seen this. No. This is legitimately strange. Okay. Okay. So this was a few years ago. Man, this went this went huge. Okay. I'm so glad you haven't seen this. Uh, me too. This was the and, first and, time in the worst possible way. The so he joined Facebook, and he made a video announcing that he was, he's going to him now on he's Facebook. A, he's a cool dude on Facebook. But he made this in his hotel room mm -hmm. and there's just like this, the choice of words, the cadence, the the way he says okay. things okay. and the look, it's all to, as a package, it makes you go like, I mean, do you even know how people talk? And, and he's married to that female singer. Too. Yeah, what yeah, Trisha Yearwood. Oh, is it that one? Yeah, I think that's okay. her name. Okay. But anyways, this is how he, Came. This is how he announced he's joining. On social media. Yes. Okay, here we go. Well, I guess it's official. We're now on Facebook. I really wasn't sure about this at the start. But then a friend of mine said something that just made all kinds of sense. She said, think of it more as a conversation. I like that. Ooh. But I'm already finding out on my own. So it's wiping the walls out between you and me. What? And I really like that. Oh. It allows us into each other's worlds, or I guess in my case, the hotel room. There's more. When I think about things I want to post, I want to post cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. That, that was a mistake to but use that word. Most stuff I'm going to post is going to be raw stuff like this. Because it's just who I am. Ugh. So if this is truly a conversation, then I say let the conversation begin. He thinks he's being a cool dude. Yeah. And he's being sort of weirdly seductive, mm -hmm. which makes it extra weird. Yeah. I think it's just a swing and a miss. It's a swing and a miss. Yeah. And, it, you know, it shouldn't be overly examined, but that's the fun. That's your so, mom's house. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, it is like... Ugh. Yeah, it, it's it's creepy. And if he were talking to somebody he'd slept with a number of times and they were in the hotel room alone, it would sort of be appropriate, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But to be talking that way to Facebook as though that's what people want to hear... 
concerning. Mm-hmm. And it makes like you, uh, you know, I like he, he does the yeah, voice yeah. drops down. No, was, it's we're on Facebook now. I like that. Yeah, it's almost like he confuses Facebook and like I uh, really like that por- cam porn. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's weird. It's strange, right? I feel bad for him. Again, I know at your mom's house because I feel bad for him. Yeah. So sorry, Tom. Is this him again? Yeah. This is this is we always play this clip because he's he's inside Studio G and like somebody opens the door uh, um, and he he basically goes like is that supposed to like he has a reaction where we're like ooh, oh like I you see that I want to see you it. see like I see something real surface real. level yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah this looks real okay at Studio G where music is first here and uh, I like it that way really cool he keeps talking about being cool that's not not a not that does not help his case at your mom's house I got is it supposed to happen oh like, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, oh, yeah. to me. But, happy birthday to G. Well, happy oh. birthday to G. Okay, so I got. So I understand what you guys are going after here. Is that supposed to happen? We're like, there's the. Yeah, he's yeah. about to tear someone's head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. N- now I'm kind of with you on him. I'm checking him out and feathering it, because he is feathering it a lot of the time. He is. Yeah. No. Yeah. What's the Subu thing? Suwu is it's from a um a guy on TikTok who was, who's in a gang uh, um or at gang affiliated he has said m- multiple times that he's a blood you know okay. I think I've seen this guy you probably the, the, seen the, him. you've shown me this one right see look at the back of it's his head possible. Does, doesn't the back of his head look like he's like got well, patchy patchy there's, scalp? A, there's there's an interesting exposure to it because yeah. of the you know the light is he holding lens. his head hand back here no his hands in front but What's, it's just Oh, I this see. This hand has like a mic or something in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just lit. Like, I'm telling you, he's, it looks like he's he's been feathered. He probably has been feathered. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, but the Suwu call is a is like a battle cry for bloods. Ah. So the guy's saying that people are calling him a false gang, a false blood. Right. He's like, you think I'm a false blood? Suwu, like meaning like, bring it. Let's go. Yeah, come on. And di- didn't he have a girlfriend that was sort of calling for people to come after him too? Oh, that's a different, that's a, a different, different video. One. Oh, here yeah. he is. Yeah, this is the Suwu clip. Uh. This public announcement goes out to all you bitch ass niggas that motherfucker claim that I'm a false blood. Bitch, call me out and see if I'm a motherfucking false blood. You niggas don't work no wreck. Suwu, bitch ass nigga. Yeah. I, so, I, so, he did that. Is he alive still? Uh, I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. But then we started, like, we really got into the the word, the, uh, na- the expression, suhu, yeah. as, like, a fun thing to play and say, like we do. Yeah. And, he, and then a lot of people were like, you don't really want to play with that's that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. We will not do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that back. Uh, all right. Let's do a couple voice messages. I think the, Do- the Dobbs excited about these. I think he's got uh, some yeah. good ones. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, this first one we have coming up is actually uh, uh, addressing something that we might have seen earlier in the show. Uh oh. Okay. If uh, Tom wants some of that NRE, I'd love to be with Christina. I'm a I'm in Ottawa, Canada, and I'm I'm only 208 pounds, but I'm tall, six foot four, and if if Christina loves her, loves that other pussy eating, you know, you know that'd be nice. And uh, you know, Tom could sit in the corner and watch if he wants to, and I can suck his cock too if, if Christina likes that. But whatever, it's for Tom too, though, because it's that new NRE, you know. <laughs> First of all, he's got a really cool flow. He's got that lazy flow. It's Fed Smoker, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it seems like it's the Fed Smoker's brother. It's the opposite because, to my ear. This is a guy Slow down. like yeah. that. Yeah. So he might be on some More downers slurry. or something. Could be. Could, Could be. be. Could be on some Could fun on afternoon pills. And he used NRE. How about that? He did. He, he actually said new NRE, yeah. which is new, new relationship <laughs> energy. <laughs> right. He also offered to blow me, which was pretty nice. Nice. No, and uh, yes. Well, yeah, I think, think F you is what he said. I, don't know, he I thought he said he would suck okay, my D. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, after he's done with that's a nice offer. My wife, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty offer. Cool dude. Yeah, um, it's not the usual voice message we get. Just you know, Tom. Oh, really? No, not usual. Well, you know, uh, cheers to Ottawa, and um, uh, I'm gonna pass on the offer, but I think it's really cool. It's a really nice thing to hear. Yeah. Got anything else? Hey, jeans. I got a quick one here for you. So my friend's been telling me that he shoots these massive loads, and he's talking about like fucking he can't even fit it all in his hand he was saying 
And he's saying it's like 9, 10, 11 big pumps that come. And it just keeps coming. But he says it's clear. Ooh. So my question to you is, is he infertile? All right, have a great day. Piss on me, beat me. I love you, Mommy. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting question. Yeah, I mean, I question. think people may... Uh, but you'll answer, of course, but I think uh, people may have struggled with the audio clarity yeah, of it. Yeah. So just to be, I'll, I'll be the guy. Please. Um, he's nope. asking you, Dr. Drew, that his friend, he shoots massive loads. Big loads. Eight, nine, ten plus um, can't thrusts. Fit his, can't fit in his hand. Can't fit in his hand of, of jizz, but that it's clear. Hmm. And he's asking, does that indicate that, that he's infertile? Okay. Uh, the people get very confused about fluid. The fluid comes from the prostate, not from the testicles. And some people produce a lot of fluid and have large seminal vesicles, which is where the fluid is stored before it's pushed out. Mm -hmm. And in the seminal vesicles is where the sperm gets mixed in. And the fluid is just more of a sense of how much he's creating and the viscosity and all that kind of stuff. Um, Don't think it has any relation to fertility. Nor does it mean that that the sperm count is low or anything. Nothing like that at all. It's just just the cocktail being made. It's just his cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. his, his, His is... Shaken, not stirred. And what about what? Is there anything scientific uh, in regards to like thrusting that many times? You know, like in terms of fertility. No, well, just like I guess that's just luck, right? Yes, it's like it's just 10, genetics. Eleven. Okay, it's just he has a large volume created by the prostate and the stored in large vesicles, the seminal vesicles, and it's got to come out when it comes out. Wow. Takes what it takes for it to come out. There hey, well, go. good times. Good time. Give me one more. Hey, Drew, I'm calling. Because I'm kind of creeped out. I got a, uh, this happened a few months ago where I would kind of get chest tightness. Jesus. Where I would just kind of feel like somebody's squeezing the center part of my chest. And then it was like the next day it would go away. I thought it was like maybe something of my lungs. Because I smoke a lot of pot. But I'm a, I'm a big guy too. I'm 6'8 and 260. And 27 years old. So I don't think I'm at risk for heart attack or anything like that, but chest tightness kind of creeps me out. Sure. That's also been happening the last like three days in a row. I'm trying, my question is would I need to make an appointment for a cardiologist? Yes. Because I know that yes. going to speak with a cardiologist is going to cost a lot of money and I don't want to go in there and drop a thousand dollars on a stress test for him to just tell me, hey, you're fine. Just eat healthy and there's, exercise there's, with weight. Okay, okay. There's unfortunately no way to know without doing a stress test. Uh, and 27-year-olds get heart disease. It happens. Rare. And you may have some congenital heart defect that you don't know about. That all has to be ruled out. He probably has to do a stress echo, which is kind of expensive. Your insurance would cover it if you have any insurance. And there's probably ways to get it for very low cost if you like go to a teaching center like a, a university, something like that. But um, you can't screw around with that. Yes, it could be your pot smoking. It could be asthmatic kind of bronchospasm. But uh, the way you're describing it, it could be anxiety, it could be nothing, it could be even esophageal, but you can't screw around with that. you got to get checked out. Sorry about that. Yeah, anytime it's like your heart, it's, you know, it's worth spending the money, right? Yeah, unfortunately. To to, to verify. Yeah, I I mean, there there may be ways to sort of uh, navigate with limited cost. Make sure you tell the doctors up front. I mean, you can go to an urgent care or just a regular doctor and don't have to go to a cardiologist. That might be less uh, less expensive. Dude, you know, one time like 10 years ago, so I was in a similar situation as this guy. I was having like kind of chest thing. And so my doctor sent me to a cardiologist, a a, a well-known cardiologist in the Los Angeles area. Yeah. And I went, and he ran an EKG and he goes, well, look, I'm looking at your EKG, there's a 5% chance that something is wrong with your heart. Right. And I was it's, like, what? It's taking your, taking your age into account. Yeah. He goes, yeah. 5% chance based on this EKG. Well, so EKG should... and your clinical presentation, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he goes, but we should run a much more. Right. Um, a treadmill test. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and you know, did the injection of the. Oh, real. The, oh yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, they sent me to the Cedars Imaging yeah. Institute. Yeah. And it was like a full thing. Yeah. So anyways, at the end of all of that, I was there like two full days at the Imaging Institute running every possible yeah, test. Yeah. They were like, your heart's fine. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Later, I sent that original EKG to a cardiologist in Florida. And he was like, you're just totally normal EKG. Yeah, get it for me. I'll look at it. Yeah, he's like, like they, we'll they shouldn't have run any of this. I, I think he means, I think the guy was saying in the context, given that it's a normal EKG and your presentation, it'd be mm. about a 5% risk. I think I that's what you. he's telling you. But I'd love to see that EKG. You still have it? 
Uh, somewhere, yeah. I'll look it if up. If you think about it, I'll get it. Okay. Okay. Tom, a privilege as always. It is a new year. It's a new theme song. It's, it's a, a new, new show. Theme. I'm very excited to, about where this is going to go. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. And uh, I look forward to working more with Christina and letting, hearing her cool thoughts. Of course. And as always, keep feathering it, brother. I'll keep feathering You keep feathering it too, my yeah. friend. It's uh, yeah. Charles Soufflé. Charles <laughs> <Sacre> Soufflé. <laughs> oh, you're doing it now. <laughs> This is the problem with uh, working with you guys. You I know. <laughs> you infect me. <laughs> That's great. I love it. All right. Uh, Tom, thank you so much. Uh, again, the uh, emails at, uh, oops, G, let me give it to you, drafterdark at gmail.com and the phone number 818-253-1693. Uh, I'm doing some streaming stuff out there. Look at all of that at drdrew.com. Check it all out there, and we'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.